So what is one of the best little computers that you can add into a home lab? We've done other videos where we've talked about the Mac Mini, we've talked about the Intel NUC, and look, these little computers are awesome. And I always recommend for you to go and get these and put them in your home lab. However, this is the thing you need to be buying. This is the Zimmer board. What is the Zimmer board, you ask? I'm gonna show you what this thing is. I mean, look at this thing. Until I got this, I was like, is this just like a big heat sink with ports? It's more than that. It's a server. It's a server with grunt. It's a server with dual gigabit ethernet points. It's a server where I can actually run external SATA hard drives into it. I've got a PCI Express port, incredible. But first, today's tech fail. Windows Phone, Windows Phone. We've heard of the iPhone, we've heard of Android, and you probably heard of Windows Phone, but it's not around anymore. Of course, Apple did their Apple thing and they wowed the world when they released or they announced the iPhone. Steve Jobs is there holding up the phone and everyone was like, ooh, ah, and then everybody needed to get this thing, except if you're an Apple hater. And then shortly after that, after it was released, then there was the Google equivalent, the Android operating system, and there was Samsung, and there was HTC, there was all these other brands, and Microsoft thought to themselves, self, what are we going to do? Well, it was first released in October 2010, and because if it was Windows, because it was running a Microsoft product, it was a bit compatible with all of your Microsoft stuff. It had a really distinct and different user interface, like a different title screen that looked different to what Apple and Android were doing. OneDrive, Outlook, Skype, all of that sort of stuff. Cortana, which is of course Microsoft's voice activated assistant to compete with some of the other ones that were out there. Office mobile apps, all of the shebang. So you would have thought, well, why was it such a failure? It just really failed to gain significant market. Officially, the phone disappeared, ended all support, and of course, now now Microsoft has now been focusing a little bit more, still in the mobile space, but now developing stuff for the iOS and for the Android platforms. And I think the two main things that made this thing fail was the fact that it just came out too late and it just failed to do the spark thing and make people go woo and ah about this thing. Just people weren't interested. So how frustrating can it be sometimes when you need to back up the photos, the videos, the data that's on your phone. And you have to plug it into a computer or you have to subscribe to like a cloud service. It can get quite annoying. Why don't you try this little thing right here? This is called the PhotoCube PD. You get yourself a micro SD, you plug it into here, and then you can actually get all of the backups from your phone directly onto the little SD card. And then you can keep that SD card safe somewhere. You can actually plug it onto the side of your computer and there you go. There's all of your backup right available for you directly on your computer. Go check it out. I've got a link to it down below in my video. Now I love technology. I absolutely love technology and I love when I find things that are new, things that I've never seen before. And then every so often something comes out on the market like the Raspberry Pi was one of those things. The Raspberry Pi was this little thing that came out and just wowed me, wowed a lot of people in tech, geeks alike. We could actually install an operating system on this little motherboard, pretty much. Now recently, I got my hands on one of these things, the Zimmer board. Now it has been advertised as a single board server, exclusively designed for makers and geeks. Hello, I'm a geek and I think this thing is amazing. It has both the expandability of a standard single board computer and the power of a micro server. This particular one is the Zimmer board 832. It runs an Intel quad core CPU up to 2.2 gigahertz processor, dual ethernet. Now that is something that is awesome. That shows you that it's a little bit more server grade, has Wi-Fi, has Bluetooth. Now it comes this one with eight gig LPDDR4 RAM, 32 gig MMC built-in storage. You can actually add two external SATA drives to this. Comes with the cables and I plug in two SATA drives. How cool is this? Comes with a PCI port so you can add additional cards. The Zimmer board of course does support a whole bunch of operating systems. You can run Windows onto it, but you can also run a whole bunch of your Linux stuff. And if you wanna get fancy, even some of your server operating systems. I mean, I love this thing. I literally just plugged it in, hook it up to my screen and it's brilliant. I mean, you wouldn't even think this is a computer, but it functions like a computer and it's got a lot of grunt. I think it just looks really cool. I mean, a few things that I love is the fact that you can get those external hard drives connected onto it. And you could run potentially four terabytes 
worth of storage. Set it up as a VPN. Set it up as a firewall security server like PFSense. Now, if you have not tried PFSense, go and check it out. It's absolutely awesome. And you can run that directly on the board and then secure your entire network. Something else that I tried on my Zimmer board was setting it up as a media server running Plex to be able to manage all of my media, all of my content, my home stuff. I go on a trip and I record a whole bunch of videos and I can chuck all of that stuff into Plex onto a hard drive, which is now connected to my Zimmer board, manage all of my content that way. And you can actually install Plex directly out of the box. When you do get the Zimmer board, you get the Linux operating system directly onto it, set it up, configure it, get it talking out to the network and the devices out on the network can actually then go and actually scan the network, stream, play all of your video content directly off that. I love that. Very similar to a media server is a file server, a spot to actually manage all of your files. You can take advantage of things such as SMB and KIF shares. You can take advantage of maybe NFS. You can set up security groups to actually allow only certain files to be shared with only certain types of people. If you wanna get really fancy, you can go and build yourself a NAS. Now a NAS of course is a real physical device that you can go and buy. You can go buy a Synology NAS for example. Well you can also go and install some free software and convert it into to a NAS. True NAS is one of my favorites and then essentially you make this server accessible out on the network and centrally manage them in one spot. I'm running now Plex, I've played around with PFSense, I've set it up as a NAS and that's why I reckon this is one of the greatest little servers that you can get. In the video show notes I've got a link to go and check out one of these also. And there's a tech channel of course and we release videos every single week so why don't you stay tuned for the next video where we continue talking about all things tech.